the summer season of 2015 is just now kicking into high gear, so it's time for me to do my seasonal anime you should be watching list. What's that? The season's well over halfway done? Shut up, I'm not late. Everything you could want in an anime season, this one's got it. We've got trap characters, we've got moe blobs, we've even got a protagonist who's deaf. This is the standard trapped in video game cliche, which already has a massive fan base clamoring that it's not like SAO, damn it. That sounds familiar. What's the only thing more prevalent in anime nowadays than the trapped in an MMORPG cliche, you ask? That's right, you guessed it. Fan service. Lots and lots of fan service. There's shows with boobs. There's shows with ass. There's shows with boobs and ass. What more could you want? Well, if that's not enough, you votables at it again with an otherwise mass series, but hey, dad animation, doe. And look at that, it's actually not Tight Moon related. Scratch that, I'm getting word that God Eater's been delayed again. Sorry folks, looks like it'll have to wait till next season. Or winter. Or never. <sighs> Heaven's feel couldn't come any soon. But wait, there's more. Jun Mueda and Ki are back to give me my feels fix with an original series by the name of Charlotte, for seemingly no apparent reason. Monster Musume gives us that tentacle porn we've all been waiting for, and Dragon Ball Super harkens back to a simpler time where anime was made with Flash. We've even got the long-awaited second season of Yona of the Dawn. Ah, <sighs> dreams do come true, wait. Damn it! Enough with the infomercial. Today, under the scope, I give you my summer 2015 anime you should be watching. First up is Charlotte. Stop me if these titles sound familiar. Clan Ad, Kanon, Angel Beats, Little Busters, Air. What do they all have in common? Well, besides the fact they're all depressing as shit, these are the anime series from the visual novel studio Key, famous for dishing out the feels like no other. They've teamed back up with Jun Mueda and PA Works to give us an anime original series in the same vein as Angel Beats that promises to deliver the feels in force. Charlotte is about a group of students with special abilities, kind of like superpowers, but with a caveat. Their powers are very much imperfect. While things may initially appear normal and happy, something very dark is clearly going on under the surface. The main protagonist comes off as a bit of a dick, and why wouldn't he when he uses his power to try to pick up a girl by almost running her over with a truck before saving her at the last second? <sighs> You're damn right it was! His character, however, is a very refreshing departure from the Mr. Do No Wrong MC I've come to expect, and the show leaves a lot of room for him to grow. Just seeing Ki and Jun Mueda's names attached to it makes this a must-watch for me, but the interesting premise and promising potential is more than enough for me to stick around. Whether Charlotte will right the wrongs of Angel Beast's rushed and lackluster finish remains to be seen, but to this point, all signs point towards one hell of a ride to the top. Just don't forget to grab a tissue or two along the way. Next up, Gako Gurashi, or School Live. Ah, <sighs> don't you just love Moe's school life anime? Cute girls doing cute things with cute music and cute animation. Gako Gurashi satisfies all your Moe cravings and then some. <laughs> Wait, what's that, Admiral Akbar? It's a trap! Yeah, to put it bluntly, Gako Gurashi satisfies a different kind of craving. The first 20 minutes or so of the first episode would have you believe it's your standard Moe slice of life show, until it promptly drops an anvil on your head and slaps your preconceived notions into next week. The twist at the end of the first episode makes for one of the most well-executed, shocking endings to a first episode of a series I've ever seen. The foreshadowing is everywhere, and it's absolutely brilliant. Over the course of the episode, I went from slightly bored, to bored out of my mind, to holy fuck, next episode now! Whether the show maintains that level of mindfuck awesomeness afterwards is up for debate, though I'm leaning toward hell yeah it does. Nevertheless, the one thing you can't question is how absolutely amazing that twist is. This is great psychological horror and a very interesting, very unique spin on the typical Moe school life anime. I'm gonna shut up now, because I feel like I've already said too much. Just go watch the first episode, and please try to avoid any and all spoilers, plot summaries, etc. along the way. You won't regret it. Gangsta. I'll admit, I'm a sucker for a gritty crime drama, so Gangsta immediately appealed to me. You've got your typical crime-laden cesspool, complete with gangs, corruption, and prostitution. Our main duo is a pair of for-hire guys who do the dirty work for the local police force, mafia, etc. Reasons why you should watch Gangsta are simple. The characters are very promising so far, and their development has been handled well. The main duo of Warwick and Nick are particularly noteworthy as a compelling, unique pair that rivals the best of buddy cop groups out there. 
I should probably mention that Nick is also deaf. So far, that's an interesting twist that isn't just unique for unique's sake. The plot has definitely started to thicken as the show's worn on, so don't be discouraged if you're having trouble getting past the first few episodes. Fans of Black Lagoon and Cowboy Bebop, Gangsta is right up your alley. With an intriguing world, a compelling main duo, and some gritty action to top it all off, Gangsta is a must-watch for anyone who loves a good action adventure. Prison School Ah, Prison School. Allow me to describe Prison School for you in just three short words. What. The. Fuck. I'm generally very open when it comes to genres in anime, but if there's one I tend to avoid, it'd have to be etchy. Rather than make me laugh, or whatever else it's supposed to do, the fan service and explicit sexual content just makes me uncomfortable, and in some cases, annoyed. So when I was deciding which shows I was going to watch this season, I immediately passed on two shows as soon as I saw them. Prison School and Shimaneta. Incidentally, both wound up on this list. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. The bottom line is this. Prison School is fucking hilarious, I don't care what anyone else says. If that means I've got the sense of humor of a 13 year old, I'm okay with that. The ecchi isn't necessarily what's so great about the comedy either. Sure, it is in some cases, but in most, it's the over-the-top ridiculousness of the situations coupled with the melodramatic reactions from the characters that actually had me laughing out loud, which is pretty rare for a TV show. It actually has a plot, and a pretty good one too, I might add. There's a wide range of characters, and while some are pretty meh, others are fantastic. Namely, the demonically bipolar Hana and the crazed otaku Gakuto. I went into this show expecting to suffocate under mountains of pandering and fan service, and instead, I can happily say that I left it laughing my ass off under mountains of pandering and fan service. For those of you who are immediately turned off by the ecchi tag, take it from someone who was in your shoes not too long ago. If you're looking for comedy, Prison School is not one you want to miss. It's the only time I've actually enjoyed ecchi and fan service. Well, I guess I should say the second time. Shimoneta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. One look at the show's poster and you'll probably know why I initially decided to skip it. Is that a girl with panties on her head? And she's using them as a mask. Fuck it, I'm out. Only until I saw all of the praise heaped onto it did I decide to give it a shot. That and because I still had two slots to fill on this list and nothing to fill them with. After all, I'm not going to put a show that I only half recommend on here. Thankfully, this never became an issue, as Shimonetta and the previously mentioned prison school easily garnered my praise. Shimonetta takes place in a future Japan that has banned the use of all dirty language and media to the point where saying the word penis is almost equivalent to blowing up a school. Of course, the long-term implications of such a policy leave the next generation with no idea of what love is, or even how babies are made. It's an interesting premise that makes for a nice message about the problems with censorship. Unlike a lot of fanservice type shows out there, Shimonetta doesn't just serve as an excuse to make sex jokes, though it does do plenty of that. It actually has a message behind it as well. But who gives a shit about all that? You should really just watch Shimonetta because it's fucking hilarious. The large cast of characters can only be described as diverse, ranging anywhere from Psycho Yandere, to Psycho Creeper Chick, to Psycho... well, she's just Psycho. The self-censorship makes great irony and only adds to the humor. I'm as surprised as you are to find two ecchi shows on this list, but when a show makes me laugh as much as Shimonetta, there's no way I can keep it off. In a season with a lot of shows I felt pretty meh about, these are five I highly encourage you take a look at. And that's all for me. Tell me which your favorite show this season is and which ones I left off in the comments below. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching, see you next time.